Welcome to this episode of Engineering Success Profile Editions. Today we're going to talk to Jennifer Glover, uh, your PhD engineering research student doing aeroacoustics. Um, hi Jennifer, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. It's great to see you, great to have you on here. Can we start, Why, what made you choose a career in engineering? So I think like pretty much all engineers, um, I was good at maths and science at school. Yeah. Um, and when I was looking at career options, I really wanted to pick something where I could feel like I could make a difference and really sink my teeth into something. Yeah. Um, and that's when I came across engineering. I think a lot of women are perhaps pushed towards medicine because you're caring, yeah. uh, but I am very squeamish. So I would have been a <laughs> pathetic doctor. Yeah. Um, so engineering, there's no blood, it's much better and that's when i discovered aeronautical and just thought oh it's fascinating that's what that's what i want to study yeah so so what, how did you come across aeronautical <laughs> you know it's not something you come across how, how did that happen um well actually i was doing these online career survey stuff so you know when you come to careers your school goes oh have a look at these surveys and see what yeah, comes yeah. up and engineering was coming up but then i saw aeronautical and i didn't know what it was um, and that's when I started research into it. And when I actually started looking at the degree courses, I thought, God, look at all this engine design stuff. Look at the yeah. slow stuff. It sounds fascinating. And you have to do all this. It's really applying all of that maths and physics you learn at A level. I can honestly say I've used all of it. Right. And that's what really <laughs> brought me to it. Cause I just thought, you know, this is going to be really varied and really interesting. Yeah, and yeah. certainly when it comes to, you know, you're doing engine design, engine design, things like that. Just going, this is this is this is rocket science. It's the best thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so it just this is this is definitely for me because I'm going to be interested in all of it. Right. Whereas you know other subjects, you're like, oh, you know, I'm not, not interested in yeah, you know yeah. wiring yeah. a plug. I want to do want to yeah. do something that moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're currently in your final year of your PhD. Can you explain a little bit more about what your research is about? Um, so aeroacoustics, for those that don't know, um, is aeronautics, so airplanes, helicopters and rocket ships and acoustics is all to do with noise. Yeah. So specifically, I work in jet engine noise. I'm sure we're all aware that aircraft are incredibly noisy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this isn't just an irritation. It's an environmental health risk. It's yeah. the second largest environmental health risk after emissions. So it's really serious. It leads to very serious health conditions. Yeah. So it's something that I'm quite passionate about um resolving because i think it's often ignored i know we've all had our headphones too loud and yeah. um, and so what i'm trying to come up with is a new form, form of soundproofing for a jet engine right. so it's a particularly tricky problem because it's low frequency high decibel noise and most solutions work really well on medium so about 2000 hertz and above right. but actually the slow frequency noise is really damaging and just because we can't hear it doesn't mean it isn't isn't causing damage well, yeah yeah so the idea is using a brand new classification of material, which is a meta material, you know, one that's going to be the new nano, we're all going to know about it. Right. But at the minute, um, meta materials is defined by introducing a human made structure and a natural structure to material. So a really good example is a metallic foam. We know metals don't have a foam structure. You force them into the foam structure and it actually gives them new and much more efficient acoustic properties. Right. Yeah. But I'm, looking at something called um space filling curves and they are these wonderful aesthetic maze patterns right. and essentially the noise gets lost in the maze okay, and so yeah, you yeah. these unlike a phone which is more random these are really tunable so i can make a certain maze of a certain length with so many right angle bends <laughs> and yeah. that works um for the low frequency noise right. so essentially i'm making a, a maze soundproofing tile <laughs> yeah, yeah. in its simplest form <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so what made you uh, choose that research subject um i when i went out on placement i actually thought i would go in straight into industry um, and i worked for a company called itp aero and they're a jet engine certification consultancy so looking at getting stuff ready for the market yeah um because engines are my, my, my main passion you might have noticed and um, that's what <laughs> yeah. i'm really interested in yeah um, but while some placement thought you know what i really miss acad academia i miss that research aspect and so my personal tutor happened to be um, the lecturer for noise and vibration and <laughs> right. i was good at it i had a good relationship with, with her yeah um, and so i spoke to her about a phd um, and when she retired she passed me on to, to my current supervisor um, right. dan o'boy um, 
and so that's how I sort of walk in I think a lot of people think PhDs you have to go through this sort of competitive system but actually if you're staying within your own university and you speak to someone and go I love your subject help me get a PhD <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, yes yeah. how can I help because, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know there's nothing better than an enthusiastic um tutee that's right yeah um, yeah so they're, they're more than happy to, to, to make it happen yeah yeah so what skills do you think uh, uh, individuals need to become an engineer i'm sure if i said the same things but it's those the, the buzzwords communication teamwork but communication is actually particularly for research is all about making it understandable for someone else yeah, yeah. you need to have that level where you can you can write your research at you know a 12 year old reading level that that's the communication yeah, that's yeah. really i think most important because from reading a lot of journals you can really alienate people with your language and actually engineering is about solutions that help a whole community Gosh, yeah. um but if they don't understand what you're trying to sell then, then no one's <laughs> no, gonna buy it no. um as i say teamwork but actually my research is on my own but i have to use <laughs> other people you know i have to ask other people Gosh, and have those yeah, personal yeah, skills yeah, yeah and then it's the main one is obviously having a passion for problem solving and also a determination because it goes wrong a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just go yeah. okay, that hasn't worked imaginative new idea try this one yeah. um yeah, and that, that imagination, particularly in my work, where you just take inspiration from what you see. One of, one of the designs I'm testing is based off a spider web, right, yeah. which is obviously a beautiful, intricate structure. And actually, that bringing that idea, going, well, you know, why haven't we done this? That's a huge element to it, to, to drawing on your knowledge from other places. Um, yeah, I think it, it's all the classic ones, but they're there for, for a good reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think that the more that you do, you talk about the communication, do you think that the more that you do, the better you become at it? Or do you think it's just one of those skills that you you really need to to grasp before you get into it? I think before you go to university or start an apprenticeship, you're going to have to do a lot of presentations. So you need to get over that fear of public speaking. Yeah, I yeah. think everyone has it, but it goes away just over time. If you keep yeah, doing it, yeah, it, you get better at it. That's not to say I don't get nervous before I speak to someone because <laughs> yeah. you, know, you always do because you're really yeah. excited about something and you, and, and you want to make sure everyone else feels the same way. Yeah. Um, I think before you start there, you have to really have the, the basic skills of it, but it's something you develop. If you hate it and avoid it, then it's going to make it worse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. For me, um, well, I'm a massive prepper for, for speaking. Um, mm -hmm. If I do a presentation to, to, in schools for kids, I will know the script word for word because right. For me, that gives me confidence. In addition to that, I have learning difficulties, which mean that I can't just read a script. That wouldn't no. work. No. Um, and ad living is not for me either. So <laughs> that, that's, that's my skill set is yeah. memorise it and give an hour talk. And that, that's <laughs> the way I do it. Because yeah. I know yeah. exactly what's coming next. Yeah, yeah. So, so for you, what, what's the most challenging part of what you do? The most challenging part is you get things wrong much more than you get things right. Right. so you have you have to be really resilient so i when i started this project i wanted to do to create a simulation tool so all of my experiments i use white noise at a high decibel it is hours on end of just <laughs> yeah, it's horrid yeah. um and so really it'd be fantastic if i had a simulation tool that was on a free to use um source right. so rather than some of the, the very expensive um simulation licenses so people could use it you know companies could research something and recreate this experiment yeah um i can safely say after three years i've not done it <laughs> because in hindsight it was very very ambitious right <laughs> and it's, you, you have to go you know what I've, I've i've probably done a thousand iterations of it but going okay analyze it don't take it personally analyze it and overcome yeah, it and yeah. that's really difficult because this PhD is something I've built, built up and it, and it, yeah, it yeah. really sucks that I can't do it yeah, but yeah. actually I've learned so much from it and if I communicate it in the right way someone will really learn a lot from it yeah. um, but it doesn't mean you know I haven't had to build a really thick skin to go okay <laughs> it's not it's not it's not personal it's not vendetta yeah, against me yeah, I just, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so 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 on the flip side what what do you find most rewarding about about your job um I think that's when you things do start to, to fall into place and that that clicking of knowledge yeah. so at the beginning you you have a basic understanding of of noise but now i feel i actually do feel like i can say i'm an expert in it and, <laughs> and yeah 
when people ask questions, being able to confidently answer and, and actually educate people on it, I think that's the most rewarding thing. At the end, I'm going to have this book that I'm going to be exceptionally proud of that yeah, yeah, yeah. one day someone might use. If someone references it, I should be over the moon <laughs> yeah. because you've actually helped someone progress. And that's yeah, a real that's, that's, that's the joy of being right at the cutting edge of something is yeah, yeah. it's going to be something big, I think, at the end, yeah. even if you know only one other person reads it yeah so you know after your after your phd you know what what sort of positions are open for you you know with with, with what you've been doing and and how do you hope to continue uh, your career i think it's a very challenging one um particularly in the current climate because uh, it would be, be pretty much be you know what jobs out there is, <laughs> is what i take but yeah i think it's about that balance between i'm a very I'm very very specialized in in acoustics yeah but actually waves are waves so I can go for that full frequency range right. and for me that consultancy analysis element the report writing is what I'm good at what I really enjoy yeah. so I'd love to go in and help people with their acoustic problems whatever field that be whether that's building engines anything in between yeah um I really enjoy that because it's a it's an individual problem and it's not going to take me three years to solve <laughs> you know after all this research it should take me you know a couple of months at most yeah yeah um, but also i really enjoy it the policy as aspect so through volunteering i'm involved um with a charity the women's engineering society and i'm yeah. fairly deeply involved in the governance of that although n not quite a trustee but you know maybe <laughs> in a few years i'll give it yeah, a go yeah, yeah. Um, and educating and guiding engineering through would be a real privilege that's something i'd really enjoy yeah yeah so i know you're uh, neurodiverse being autistic uh, dyslexic and mears erlen syndrome uh, and i know other engineers that are, that are dyslexic as well how has this impacted on your engineering journey um i would say that everyone's had a very individual uh, for me i was extremely lucky i come from a family of dyslexics so oh, i think okay. very very early on they were like well, you're like me you must be dyslexic <laughs> yeah. and i was actually diagnosed at seven right, and i think okay. that made a big difference to me being able to get up to phd level um because my parents i'm sure anyone who has anyone with learning difficulties and has been part of the sen system will know they fought very hard for me to get the right support yeah yeah and yeah. i had support in lessons up until year nine i've had a laptop all the way through from secondary school or right. the version of and that's made the huge difference because yeah. from day one i was put on a level playing field yeah yeah and it's it's about facilitating that support that someone needs so with your sexy i think that one probably affected me the most academically yeah um but because i knew i knew what would help i could speak to family members and ask them what that helped them yeah, of course, yeah. and you know going in headstrong going i need extra time in exams i need um, computer sort that out for me yeah um, and so actually because I had that support and the crack support really early on yeah it hasn't been too much of a challenge it it's more of a challenge for other people <laughs> when you're in a group yeah. and you tell yeah. someone that you're dyslexic even though they've known you for two years they suddenly think you can't read <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. like no you sat next to students I can definitely read I'm just saying that when we bring this report together don't be surprised if there's spelling mistakes and it's yeah. it's 100% not a lack of effort believe no, me no. I've read it 50 times <laughs> yeah, um, yeah but if you educate people and, and, and through platforms such as this going if you have if you support people in the correct way there's absolutely no barriers yeah. but it's getting that support in the first place yeah, which would be yeah. really hard yeah um, and for, for autism I don't think that's affected me academically it might have even helped me because I'm so yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah. narrow-minded when yeah. I'm working a bomb could go off I wouldn't notice <laughs> um, <laughs> which isn't very good if someone's trying to talk to you but you know great great for my report writing yeah yeah so I was diagnosed quite late for that I was diagnosed at 24 um yeah. but that's because people see autism as what you might see in the media and they also don't think women can be autistic <laughs> um, and we are yeah. we just present differently so us we have the same struggles but we display them differently so then so they're not picked up uh, and now that i'm going into the world of work i'm you know i'm going to take that support take that yeah. mentoring that counseling whatever and you know go forward with the right tools as i have done with dyslexia yeah so so what would you say to a young person who who maybe have dyslexia 
uh, maybe thought about career in engineering or, or maybe even at school like you said um you know what what would you say to them and and you know just just go in like you did and, and be you know blatant you know give me this and, and help me with that because uh, it must be a very hard thing to do you know obviously add your family but for somebody that hasn't got that support network what, what would you say to them i think you first of all you can't be embarrassed by it because there's nothing you can do about it it's yeah. no one's fault and actually in the same way as if, if you broke your leg you would go and get it fixed because yeah. you deserve that support you deserve that you know those resources it's the exact same thing it's a long-term condition it's your whole life you deserve that support and actually it's to everyone's advantage to give you that support because if they facilitate that then you can reach your full potential yeah. and so as long as you don't see it as a barrier because if i hadn't had that support would i have been at this level no but because i was given that support i could reach this full potential and do some research that yeah. actually could make an impact yeah. and you have to you know look at i think it, it's really important to have role models that you can say well they got the support yeah. so so go in and go well they got the support so this is what i want that's right yeah, um, yeah. and I'm sure if you explain to people most you know nine times out of ten they're going to back you and, and help you yeah, yeah but sometimes you have to be a bit dogged about it <laughs> <laughs> which you've been <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah well put it this way as an examiner would much rather me type it up than have to read my scroll so <laughs> but they gave me the computer <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so um so, so what advice would you give to a, a future engineer I think if anyone's interested in engineering, um, do a lot of research because there's so much variety yeah, yeah. that the, you'll definitely find something you're interested in. But really, if you're at a stage where you're picking your career, find out what type of learner you are and where you want to go with it, because yeah. it makes no difference if you choose an apprenticeship route or a university route. You can become the CEO. It doesn't, you know, yeah, when yeah. I was on placement, RMD did an apprenticeship and it, it didn't, didn't phase anyone. Yeah. Um, so find out what your strengths are what your weaknesses are but really just go for it because it doesn't matter if you know decide after you've done your qualifications it's not for you yeah. it opens doors yeah of course especially in this climate i think i have got a very specific degree but you know what my project management skills have come on massively so i could even go out the field and use them my yeah. math skills are you know probably better than some people in finance <laughs> <laughs> so maybe i could do that <laughs> i'll back myself so, yeah so I think you, is knowing that it doesn't matter if this isn't what you're going to do for the next 60 years it's a great place to start yeah 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 so you're you're the uh, wes student group liaison officer um what does that actually involve and how do you support universities um so wes is the women's engineering society and it's a charity that's 101 this year and we look to support and promote women through all stages of their career yeah. and with the student liaison i look after the university groups so lots of universities have got women in engineering or women in stem groups yeah. and i'm their contact so i help them with affiliation i help them get financial support i help them yeah. with events um, and also try and create opportunities for them so um a, a brilliant ex trustee joe and um, she set up the board and i was actually the first chair and it's from yeah. that position that that I went onto this liaison yeah. and I was the chair of the university groups board um, and on that board we, we create opportunities for them we get networking for them and they get a lot of um, exposure that they perhaps wouldn't have had yeah. and so we have people come in and do talks it's all about these these women are going to be future leaders in engineering they yeah. are definitely going to be the, the you know the head honcho so yeah. if we can give them a head start you know all the better because i know they're going to go on and do great things so if we can give them a bit more support in their their communication skills or give them the right contact yeah. that's what we're trying to create because we all know the old boys network exists this is just you know we're, we're living in it off and creating girls one so that <laughs> everyone has a network that they yeah. Can to. <laughs> yeah yeah it's brilliant um and so obviously i know you do an awful lot of outreach work um to promote engineering you go into schools you do talks and, and, and such like um what what's your message uh, to young people to to attract them into engineering we know there's a skill shortage what, what's your message to young people just to to excite them to come into engineering um my message is, is that engineering is what makes science possible i think when you're younger you can get really excited about all these science programs 
you might see something on, on Blue Planet, you might see, you know, a, a science lab or something like that. Yeah. But it's engineers that take this out to the community. It's all about community solutions. And that's why we want them to come into engineering, because if we don't have a diverse community, we don't reflect the people we're trying to help. Yeah. And so it, anyone is welcome. I've never come across a problem where people don't want more engineers coming through they don't want more talent coming through yeah. and particularly when you you do stem and I, I know i'm a minority in engineering but but not in anything else yeah and so i can go in and say look i'm classed as a minority that's absurd come in and and, and balance it out because you've got talent that we're just not getting hold of yeah. and actually when i talk about my job i hope people realize that how passionate and excited i am about engineering and how happy i am that i chose this career <laughs> path and i think yeah. For some, that's enough to get them interested in. Like, oh, she's she's happy. She's on cloud nine. Well, <laughs> yeah. Why don't we do what she's doing? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jennifer, that's it. Thank you so much for your time and being on the show today. No, oh, thank you very much. A lot of fun. <laughs>